Hi there, welcome to another chapter of the electric BMW 320i project. Yeah, it's been almost more than two months uh, since my last video. Uh, just taking a lot of things I'm doing uh, and unfortunately uh, in the summer months, uh, warm weather, I have a lot more distractions than I do in the winter. So uh, that's been going on, but meanwhile, uh, one of the things that's been delaying getting the whole electric vehicle going is uh, I decided to upgrade the brakes. Uh, my idea is that uh, since this um, with the electric motor is going to go a lot faster than it did with the ice, uh, it's going to need to stop a lot faster. And so I um, installed a uh, set of uh, disc brakes in the rear, converted the old drum brakes, and uh, upgraded the front brakes, and I'll show you that. Uh, now I have a new uh, version of the BMS, and uh, that one uses a shunt instead of the uh, CAB uh, 300 uh, flux gate sensor so now there's two options for the uh, way you measure the pack current in the BMS and hopefully we'll get those built up and into jack store soon and finally I uh, got all the batteries or almost all the batteries installed in the car and uh, also been wiring up things I've been working on the engine compartment trying to get all of the components installed and all wired up because uh, once the Siemens and motor is in there with the DMOC it's really going to be tight so uh, after that, I get everything done, then the motor will go in. So let's take a look. Here's the uh, rear drum brake assembly that's going to be removed and replaced with disc brakes. Supposedly just pop everything off and pull off the hubs and put on the new ones and should have a disc brake. Let's see how it goes. All right, the uh, castle nut came off all right. Impact driver worked well. Uh, had to get a big socket there, the 36 millimeter for that nut, but uh, that came off. So now let's see how the flange will come off. Got a gear puller and try that next. Well, pulling on this for a while and uh, basically cranking it so much I'm pulling up the car. So this can't be uh, going to work and it seems like the threads on this uh, cheap uh, puller are, are uh, breaking down so I uh, thought it was going to be a nice inexpensive solution to this but it uh, doesn't look like it's going to work so the next test is to try and use this uh, hydraulic puller it's uh, supposed to be able to do it says five ton. That should be enough to separate that. I certainly hope it doesn't pull the rear end apart. All right, there it's attached. Let's set the camera up so we can record this as it happens. That's it. That's coming off. Wow. That took a lot of pressure. Never taken apart in 35 years. So now the uh, disc rotor is um, installed. I pointed out in an earlier part of this installation that um, on hold down a hole pin that bolt normally on BMWs would be in the right place but this is not a BMW rotor so it's not in the right place and it's not the right diameter but the solution is just to use some lug nuts 
to uh, center it, hold it down, get the caliper on, and then the wheel. Brake pads here have been uh, coated on the side that contacts uh, the metal and the piston with the stuff from um, Bavarian Auto Sports called no Noise Free. It's a silencing material. It's kind of like a rubbery stuff that goes on there and helps keeps the um, pads from squealing when the brakes are applied. And now the caliper's on. It's held in. Those brake pads have little springs at the top and that's what pushes against it to hold it down. And then there's just two bolts that hold that. Still have to attach the um, brake line and the parking brake, but that uh, be, should be pretty easy to do. So, rear brake's done. Here's a look at the front brakes and what I did. I upgraded the rotors to these uh, vented uh, high performance rotors and I also painted the uh, calipers as well as put in uh, carbon pads. It's going to be uh, interesting to see. Um, the problem when you put on disc brakes in the back is now you have a lot more braking action in the back and potentially that would cause the rear wheels to lock up on a when you brake really hard. But by increasing the braking in the front you can hopefully balance that out and I won't have to uh, replace the compensation module that's in the uh, brake circuit right now. Plus the rear end is going to weigh a little bit more because the battery's back there so that should help to hope and um, help the whole situation of rear wheel braking. So now I have a new version of the BMS. It's uh, pretty much exactly the same as the other. It's designed to look at four channels of temperature and voltage. But this one now has the ability to uh, measure the total pack current with a shunt. So it's um, exactly the same except instead of using the uh, CAB 300 current sensor, um, it now uses a shunt. And it's the exact same circuit that's in the um, JLD505. Thank you, Paulo. So it works pretty much the same. The wiring's a little bit different because I had to take into account new wires to uh, connect to this board. But uh, pretty much the same exact cinch connector, 18 pins, and uh, wiring out. So that now makes uh, two options available in the BMS. One you where you can use a shunt or one where you can use the... Uh, flux gate uh, sensor. They uh, both have their advantages and disadvantages. The, um, the flux gate has the great advantage that you don't have to uh, make another connection or cut in the wire. It just slips right over one of your battery cables. Uh, it has the disadvantage of not as much accuracy and that's mostly the big advantage of the shunt is it has really high accuracy but has the disadvantages you got to make a cut and two more crimps and you know, just another place for things to break. So that's up for right now. Um, I haven't really decided yet which I'm going to put in my system, in my car, but uh, we'll see what goes on after this. Here's a closer look at the system again. Uh, this shows the uh, new version 7 of the BMS board, which has this standard uh, external shunt. Uh, this is a 100 millivolt shunt and Basically all you have to do is connect two wires, three wires to it and it's ready to go. This is the um, CAB300, the, the flux gate sensor. That requires uh, 12 volts going to it as well as a uh, CAN and that's the only way you can read that sensor is with the CAN bus. But we already have a program that uh, reads that. So the, the version 6 of the BMS which uses the CAB3 or the version 7 which will use an external shunt. So hopefully uh, both of these will be available sometime soon. They, uh, these boards have been tested out and working and we have code. I think uh, a couple of episodes ago Colin showed uh, this actually working in the car that they are uh, working on. So uh, we'll see what's available pretty soon in uh, Jack's store. Here's what's been going on in the engine compartment. No, the uh, Siemens and DMOC are not in there yet. 
but soon to be. I've been working on placing everything, getting everything connected and wired up, which I thought would be much easier to do without the motor in there. So those are the uh, two water reservoirs for the cooling loops. It's the Delphi DC-DC converter. have a little 12-volt uh, sealed cell battery over here. And then the main contactor box is down there. That's the uh, mount for the Siemens motor. The uh, vacuum pump and canister uh, reservoir for the power brakes is there. I basically have reworked all that. I uh, restored that brake booster and got some new parts. The uh, white wires are the uh, battery box heater wires. So there's gonna, those are going to have to be terminated somewhere as well as uh, get the uh, DMOC, I mean the Delphi uh, DC-DC converter connected up. And of course then there's the front battery box. Still has to have batteries put in it. Alright, finished putting the batteries in the trunk box and now to test out this uh, sliding rail system so that I can move the battery box in and out to be able to strap them up and cable everything. Let's see, it's a lot of weight. Oh, look at that, it slides very nicely. And back. That's great. 254 pounds of batteries. And it just smoothly slides. Awesome. Here are the uh, rear seat boxes that have all the batteries now in them. They just, again, like the uh, trunk box, has to all be strapped up. But they're all nice and snug in there. The, um, the gray uh, multi-conductor cable that's in the middle there, that's going to be the uh, wire for the um, BMS to uh, be able to pick off voltage and temperature. What I'm going to do is just open up that multi-cable and just take out a couple of the small 28 gauge wires and connect those and so there won't be a lot of spaghetti wire or extra cables running around. I just have one cable with all of the data in it going back to the front of the car. The um, other wires here are the battery box heaters and thermistors. I don't know how quickly I'm going to be connecting those up being it the middle of summer coming up but uh, those eventually will be connected to a, the um, controller in the front of the car. Here in the trunk, the um, Brusa charger is all set up, uh, almost connected. Just have to do a few more connections in this little junction box. And then the last thing in here is this bar, which is the brace for the battery box so that it doesn't move during acceleration of the car, getting some mounts made so that this will be up here and hold it in place. All the batteries are in there. And you can see they still need to be strapped up, but that's going to happen very shortly. And all, of course all the wiring and everything else is pretty much done, so this is one of the last pieces that has to be finished. But uh, pretty close now. Get these batteries all connected and then it'll be ready to put the Siemens in and take it for a spin. So you can see I've been having lots of fun with uh, brake jobs. Uh, that really took a lot longer than I thought it was going to. Um, I also was planning to upgrade the suspension, all the shocks and springs as well as all the bushings and I decided I'm gonna wait and uh, get the car rolling first before I take that on. It just seemed like since the car's up in the air, it'd be easier to do now, but it's just as easy to put it back out there and work on it again. Uh, hopefully um, I get all the batteries strapped up soon and uh, get that Siemens motor in there. And uh, maybe next video you'll be able to see both of those things going on as well as maybe uh, the car spinning down the road. So thanks again for watching and we'll catch you again.